Hey guys, hey creepy fam, it's me. <laughs> this video is a little bit later than I wanted it to be, but that's because I got a brand new mic for Christmas. Yes, I got a Rode mic. I thought it was the one, <laughs> you know, not the best one, but the one that a lot of YouTubers use, um, whatever. And I was so excited. This is the first video I filmed with my new mic, um, new lighting, a new lens, and the sound sucks. I want to cry, but I really needed to get this video up today for you guys because you'll see it's basically, well, it's important that I put it up January 1st. So that being said, I have tried to fix the audio to the best of my capabilities, but it's not great. I'm so much happier with the picture and the lighting, but the audio is atrocious. So I'm so sorry. This will be the last video with audio this terrible, but hopefully you guys still enjoyed the video and I hope you guys all had a safe and happy New Year's Eve and a great New Year's Day today and I love you so much and I will see you again on Thursday with a brand new video. All right, enjoy. This case gives me hope, and this case is a perfect illustration and example as to why you should never stop talking about a case. They solved the case. That's amazing, and I do have mixed feelings, like I said, about the fact that they won't release this individual's identification. I've seen a lot of cases. I've seen a lot of situations where I believe that someone has been falsely incriminated and is rotting in prison for some serious crime they did not commit. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, welcome. Happy New Year. Today is January 1st, 2020. Today is finally a true crime video. Yes, I have filmed some um, since I came back to YouTube, since announcing my pregnancy. But you know what? It's They're not edited yet. They will be. And unfortunately, I'm wearing the same shirt in the last one I filmed, which is the mysterious disappearance and unsolved murder of Chandra Levy. Today, I am going to be finally talking about the very mysterious case of Chandra Levy. Now, and I figured a really good way to start off the new year with a true crime video would probably be a look back at some of the cases I covered last year, 2019, and update you guys on a couple of cases that I have been informed of that have actually been solved or have some very um, new strong evidence or a break in the case or what have you. And there's definitely a big update in one of the cases, actually the last true crime case that I covered on this channel. And we're going to discuss that now. So please make sure you are subscribed to this channel, turn on post notifications because this channel is going to be missing person cases, unsolved true crime cases, and also anti-MLM videos. If you guys are interested in that, please continue to watch. Also, I do have a couple things I want to mention before I get into that. So if you want to skip to when the updates on the true crime cases, begin. Um, you can skip to this time in the video and I will try and leave some timestamps also in the description box down below. I am definitely taking my YouTube channel serious. This year I lost sight of what was important to me on this channel. I got distracted, I got depressed, um, and I lost a lot of motivation and I just, I just couldn't bring myself to continue to do YouTube like I was doing consistently. And I'm really sad because I know I know I've lost subscribers since I have stopped posting true crime. Um, I guess I, I didn't really stop. I just didn't post any new videos uh, of true crime because I just mentally and emotionally I couldn't. I am back and I'm definitely trying to improve the quality. I hope you guys can tell I have a new light. I have a new mic. I still need to get a stand for my mic. So I'm literally holding it in my lap. I bet you it probably sounds better like this, but this looks dumb. New lighting and um, audio. So hopefully, it works. If not, I'm going to fix it. But hopefully this is better than what you've been getting recently. I'm going to have new merch pretty soon. I'm going to um, redo my banners, redo Patreon. If you guys are one of my patrons, God bless your soul, um, because I have not posted on Patreon, Patreon in a very long time. So I thank you so much for your continued support. And please know that I am in the works of redoing the whole thing. So if you want to pull your pledge right now and wait till I come back, um, I have no problem whatsoever you, you doing that, like, please. So, so let's get into one of the main cases that has a huge update. This case has actually been solved. 
Now, I have not actually read this article yet, so it's going to be news for all of us. And I did that because I wanted to save it for this video specifically, but it is a very big break in the case, or not even break, it is, the case is solved. And it's interesting because it's actually the last true crime case that I covered on my channel. The 1971 murder of six-year-old Lubitsa Topic. So the case in question that has actually been solved is a over 50-year-old case. And that was the unsolved murder of six-year-old Lupitsa Topic. Now, she was from Windsor, Canada. And this is the article that I'm going to read to you guys um, discussing the case being solved. Windsor police announced Friday that investigators have solved a decades-old murder of a six-year-old girl, Lupitsa Topic. Authorities announced they have identified the person responsible for the 1971 murder. Police said the identification was made possible due to advances in DNA technologies and the extensive collection of evidence back in 1971, at a time when DNA wasn't even a known tool. Lubija Topic was a little girl with her entire life ahead of her and it was stolen, says Windsor Police Chief Pam Mizuno. At one point, there were more than 500 persons of interest, but it wasn't until December 9th that police say the search for her killer finally, finally ended. ended. It brings resolution to a community that has always wondered what happened to an innocent little girl on our streets, said Mizuno. Police say the man responsible for the abduction, sexual assault, and murder, Topage, was 22 years old in May of 1971. Detective Scott Chapman says the man approached Lubija and her brother and offered them money to follow him down the street. If you guys remember me covering this case, you will remember that detail. I believe they were riding their bicycle. He then provided her brother with some change to ride his bike in the other direction. Brother last saw his sister walking south on Juilliard Road, said Chapman, who was emotional during his statements. Her brother told his mom and they couldn't find her when he returned home. Four hours later, Topic's body was found in a rear yard a home on Hickory Road, a short distance from the gate to the rear alleyway. She had been sexually assaulted and murdered. This man's DNA matched separate sources of DNA from the crime scene. Based on the nature of the DNA and where it was located, we are certain that he is the person responsible. This man is recently deceased, and we will not be able to release his name publicly as, as he, he will never be formally charged. What? He was a Windsor resident who lived in the neighborhood where Topic was taken from. He was not known to the family. The man spent time in Windsor and ultimately settled in the Western provinces. He was never a suspect in the last 48 years until they developed a new lead in the last several months. This, this investigation, investigation has been under the command of seven different past Windsor Police Service Chiefs. Each chief made sure there were continuing efforts to make progress on this case. Decades of investigators worked on this case. The Tobich family, including her brother, who was with Lubicha at the time of her abduction, has been notified. The family wrote a letter thanking the Windsor Police. Says, the Tobich family would like to express their immense gratitude to a Detective Chapman, the Windsor Police Department, and the many detectives, forensics, and others whose strategic vision and enduring efforts over the past decades have brought these results. Your compassionate service represents the best of humanity. You have done yourselves, your profession, your community, and justice proud. We never gave up hope, and you never gave up. Our family owes you a debt of gratitude that can never be paid. Wow. So basically, they solved the case. That's amazing. And I do have mixed feelings, like I said, about the fact that they won't release this individual's identification. On one hand, I know what it's like to be falsely accused of something, and I can't imagine dying and still never have gotten um, to clear your name or have these new allegations put against you and you, you never got to fight them. Um, but at the same time, if they literally have forensic DNA evidence, and I believe it's probably, if I remember correctly, they found her tooth. I know there was something involving teeth that they found at the scene of where they found her body. So it just seems like they do have the guy. They have the right person. And I mean, I would even compel them to possibly approach his family and be like, listen, um, this is a situation. This is a family that's been grieving for almost five decades um, for the loss of their little girl, uh, who would be what, 56 years old now? So, and she would still, if she was 56, she would still have a ton of life left to live. And it's, it's just disappointing. So I wonder if they could do like a power of attorney and someone could help them release the name, at least tell the, the you know, even if you just tell the family, like, listen, this is the guy, you're not allowed to disclose it you know, for whatever reason, and I highly doubt they would. Um, but I don't know. What do you guys think about that? I mean, like I said, 
I've seen a lot of cases, I've seen a lot of situations where I believe that someone has been falsely incriminated and is rotting in prison for some serious crime they did not commit, like murder, etc., um, or kidnapping. But I think it's super unsettling. I don't know. I think maybe because it was a six year old and this case is so, you know, it, it's these cases, typically, these cases just remain cold and that's sad. But again, I like to cover unsolved cases. Um, mostly I like to cover a lot of missing person cases. Like I always say, exposure is key and the more awareness that you spread, the better um, chances you have at finding the missing people. But when it comes to unsolved murders and true crime, some people have mixed feelings because there's a lot of people that like to watch this stuff like to watch these kind of videos and yet they have a problem with the content or the topic and a lot of us in the true crime community are accused of um, glorifying the killers or the crimes or profiting on the tragedy of others and I can assure you that that's typically not the case. I'm sure there are some people that take advantage of these cases and exploit them and talk about them while they're doing their makeup or whatever it is. I, I, I don't know. It, that's for you to decide what's appropriate and not. But this case gives me hope. And this case is a perfect illustration and example as to why you should never stop talking about a case. If it's important to someone, and I'm sure it is because everybody has a family, typically speaking, that family, if you solve a case, it doesn't matter how old, 50 year old case gets solved. I can probably, I can assure you this family is sleeping so much better at night. Just knowing the person that did this was discovered and it's not that this person is not walking amongst them. I think if anything, that's more peace of mind. Yes, he's dead. Also, they don't know exactly who he is, um, but they do know like this was someone they didn't know personally. This is someone that was a resident of the town. It wasn't someone just passing through. There's another case that I covered last year and I covered it on February 13th, 2019. And this is about the mysterious disappearance of Alexis Murphy. Now, this case is considered solved. There is a man in custody who has been found guilty of not only her kidnapping, but also her murder. This case is one that I have mixed feelings about simply because there is no body. But that being said, um, well, there aren't any new updates on this case. I mean, the man is in prison. There is another case that I was looking at, and this was actually posted on August 31st, 2018. So this is not necessarily new. So this is about another young woman who went missing in Orange, Virginia, and her name is Samantha Clark. So she's been missing for nine years now, and she went missing on September 13th, 2010. Now, the thing that I found interesting about this is the man that was convicted in the disappearance and murder of Alexis Murphy is one of the really big suspects in this case. On September 13th, 2010, when Barbara Tinder left her home in Orange, Virginia to make the five minute drive to work the overnight shift, her daughter Samantha, who was 19 years old at the time, was in her pajamas watching television in the living room. Her son Hunter, who was 12 at the time, was in his room. Around 12.30 in the morning, Barbara's cell phone rang it was her home phone calling, but she couldn't answer since she was working. Quote, But I got on my break at 1.30 in the morning and I called Hunter and he said, Sissy left. Barbara said, He said she'd been downstairs watching TV in her pajamas, just like she was when I left for work. But she then hollered up the stairs and said she was leaving. Unquote. Hunter told his mother he didn't know where Samantha had gone. Barbara would later find Samantha's pajamas lying on her bed, so it was clear she changed in some different clothes before leaving home. The only other thing Samantha took with her was the house key. Samantha leaving the house in the middle of the night was unusual for her, according to her mother Barbara. She didn't go outside of the house after dark by herself, Barbara told Dateline, adding that there was no public transportation available at the time of night in their neighborhood. I figured she would be back. Barbara returned home from her shift around 7.05 in the morning on the morning of September 14th, 2010. Samantha still hadn't returned. Quote, I went in the house and got Hunter up and took him to school. I laid down to get a little bit of rest and hoped she'd be back by the time I woke up. But when she woke up a few hours later, Samantha was still nowhere to be seen. I was starting to get worried, Barbara said, so I went 
to go to the police department to report her. Unfortunately, they told her she needed to wait 48 hours to file a missing persons report, which is not true. They suggest that, especially in cases of possible runaway teens or adult adults that are missing because, you know, you're allowed to leave on your own accord and just disappear if you want. But just so you guys know, you do not have to wait 48 hours or 24 hours even. Orange Police Department Chief James Fenwick told Dateline that Barbara was given misinformation. Barbara reached out to another jurisdiction who said you have to wait 48 hours, but that is not correct, Chief Fenwick told Dateline. She then came directly to us. We did not get the case until the 15th, but we have been working it non-stop ever since. Meanwhile, Barbara says that she and her sister have been driving around through the town looking for Samantha, but it was too late by then. God knows where she could have been, she said. I've spoken to a couple of the girls who were really close to Samantha and they hadn't seen or heard from her either. I still have no answers. Chief Fenwick told Dateline his detectives also spoke with people who knew Samantha. So there was a new group of people that Samantha had met the week before. Now, here is where the Alexis Murphy case comes into um, the connection. Quote, the investigation is focused on the folks who she had recently become acquainted with, he said. One of the people in the group, Chief Fenwick said, was then 45-year-old Randy Taylor. Through phone records, Chief Fenwick says authorities are certain Randy was the last person known to have spoken with Samantha. Randy has been a suspect since day one, as with everyone else in that new group of people, because they were the last ones to speak with her, and other things I can't go into, Chief Fenwick told Dateline. Samantha's mother, Barbara, told Dateline her daughter was not friends with Randy Taylor, but that she does feel he's responsible for her disappearance. Quote, I think Randy took her. He called my house six times that night, and he admits that he was the last one to see her. How are you going to say you were the last one to see her if you don't know where my child is? Unquote. About three years after Samantha's disappearance, Randy Taylor was back on police radar when 17-year-old Alexis Murphy disappeared from nearby Lovingston's Virginia. Alexis was last seen on surveillance footage at a gas station with Taylor. The Nelson County Sheriff's Office, the Virginia State Police, and the FBI launched a joint investigation which resulted in the arrest of Randy Allen Taylor, who was then charged with the abduction of Alexis Murphy on August 11th, a Nelson County Commonwealth's attorney press release states. A jury later found Randy guilty of first-degree murder in the commission of an abduction and abduction with intent to file in connection with Alexis Murphy's disappearance. Taylor is now serving two life sentences at the Red Onion State Prison in Pound, Virginia. Alexis's body has never been found. Randy Taylor has not been charged in the connection to Samantha's disappearance. Back in Orange, Virginia, Chief Fenwick told Dateline, Samantha's case is definitely still a top priority. The detective who was assigned to her case retired in 2015, but he is now back to work with us part-time and only to work on this case. We definitely do not consider this an inactive case, Chief Fenwick said. At this point, with the time frame and other aspects, we do suspect foul play is the case. Eight years after her daughter disappeared, Barbara says she misses having Samantha home with her. I miss her smiles, her laughs, the funny things she would say to make me laugh, she said. She's a happy girl. She would always stay happy. And if you were sad, she'd find a way to make you happy. At the time of her disappearance, Samantha Ann Clark is described as being five foot four and weighing about 145 pounds. She has brown hair and brown eyes, and also a tattoo of a Playboy bunny on her right arm, a ticker tattoo on her right ankle, and two dolphin tattoos on her lower back. If you have any information on the whereabouts of Samantha Clark, please contact the Orange Police Department at 540-672-1491. So let me know if you guys want me to get more in depth um, and details into the disappearance of Samantha Clark, but I thought it would be good to, you know, since there isn't necessarily an update on this case, at least tie it into something else because, you know, this girl is still missing and possibly Randy Taylor was responsible, but again, he is in prison and I kind of feel like, no, I don't know. I don't know if since he was convicted, if they can't offer him a plea to like be honest about where the bodies are, um, if he was connected to the disappearance of Samantha Clark. I don't know if it's too late for any of those negotiations. Um, I'm not quite sure how the law works there. Another case that was in the media that I covered um, was the disappearance of Timothy Pitson. So I covered this case in 2017, but this was a very large case. and. The disappearance of Timothy Pitson um, 
who has been missing since 2011 is a devastating case. And unfortunately this year there was a man claiming to be the missing child. Well, long story short, it turns out that that was not Timothy Pitson, but an imposter. I still don't know exactly why he did this, but it was actually very disturbing. Um, horrific, absolutely horrific. So I just thought I would mention that because that was a pretty, a pretty well-known case that came back in the media um, this year. I should say last year, 2019. So another really tragic case that I covered uh, in 2019, the mysterious death of Tamla Horsford, who was a football mom. Basically, she was a mom um, that had a, a son on, I believe, the football team. And she attended a adult sleepover for the football moms. And allegedly, she somehow stumbled off the balcony to her death while she was smoking a cigarette, allegedly. Now, there was a lot of controversy surrounding this case, and I was very interested in it because I, like many other people in the community, could not believe that she fell the way she did. Um, it is possible, after I did a lot of research on a body trajectory and where she landed and how tall the balcony was, but listening to the 911 call and the fact that Jose Barrera, so Jose Barrera, the man that was the boyfriend of the woman I believe that was that owned the house, he actually used his credentials illegally to look into the police investigation on this case, um, which is suspicious, you know, like why would you do that? So the last time I talked about this was in March. So there is an article that was posted on November 5th, 2019 at 9, 12 p.m. It says, lost evidence and lawsuit related to mom's death prompts Forsyth County rule change. Uh, Forsyth County, Georgia, one year after the mysterious death of a Forsyth County mother at a local house party, a piece of evidence in a related civil lawsuit has gone missing. Officials confirmed to Channel 2 Action News. They also confirmed it's prompted a policy change at the courthouse. I absolutely think this was stolen, Graves said. It's been a point of contention from the day my friend passed away. They've been looking at my Facebook, the police have been looking at it, the attorneys and the party involved, the people at the party involved. An attorney representing the plaintiffs in the defamation case declined to comment about the evidence. So that's not necessarily a break or anything, but that is more suspicion to add to this case. It just, it's like it never ends. There's just so many questions. And I can see why the people close to Tamil Horsford have a bad feeling about it. Regardless, it's very sad, tragic, and my heart goes out to Tamla Horsford's family and her friends and everyone that loves and cares about her. Okay guys, so that is going to be it for the very first true crime video of 2020. I just wanted to wish all of you guys a very happy new year. I wish you guys nothing but amazing things in this new decade, this new year. I just want people to feel whole again. I want everybody to feel happy and inspired because I feel like even speaking for myself personally, I lost a ton of drive, a ton of motivation and inspiration, confidence, so much in the year 2019. And I know I did deal with a lot of loss, um, but I know a lot of you guys did as well. So my hope for us all collectively as a beautiful community here on YouTube is, you know, that we find that drive again, that we can uplift each other and still hold each other accountable, but in a nice, compassionate manner. Um, and to keep that same energy, um, to also keep that same energy for yourselves and your friends. And it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And I have said this for years. You can literally take something critical that you would like to talk or let someone know about, I guess, I don't know why, but you know, if you're that person, and you can say it in a manner that is nice that is compassionate and empathetic and not altruistic and self-serving. So I just hope that we can all be a little bit nicer on the internet. I know that's asking a lot, but it's, it's nice to have a goal. So anyways, let me know what you guys think. Do you guys know of any other updates from cases that I covered or even cases that were, you know, big in the media that possibly, you know, the rest of us would like to know about? Let us all know in the comments down below. Also, let me know of any true crime cases you want me to cover. I love you guys so much. Please remember to always be kind to yourself and others. And I will see you in my next video, which will be very soon. Uh, subscribe to my second channel if you want. It's linked down below and somewhere on the screen if you're interested in 
my daily life content and being pregnant. All right, I love you guys. Mm -hmm.